In the last video, we calculated a one variable chi-square on learning styles. We wondered if there was a dominant learning style. But now you're interested in whether there is a difference in how men and women learn. Now you have two variables, so you need to calculate a two variable chi-square. Although the underpinnings are the same, there is one critical difference in the setup, which is how you calculate the expected values. For this video, we will calculate a two-variable chi-square, paying particular attention to how to calculate the expected values. For this example, we'll look at the relationship between two variables, learning styles and sex. Let's do the easy part first, calculating degrees of freedom. In the one-variable chi-square, degrees of freedom was the number of categories, or k, minus 1. If we weren't looking at males and females, there would only be one row across three categories. So degrees of freedom for a one variable to chi-square would be 3 minus 1, or 2. But since we now have two rows of data, we have a different formula. Now we take the number of rows, we have 2, so 2 minus 1 is 1. Then we turn to the number of columns, which is 3, as we have columns for visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. And we subtract 1, ending up with 2. Then we multiply these two numbers together, 2 times 1 equals 2, or 2 degrees of freedom. The next part is to calculate the expected values. The underlying concept is the same as the one variable chi-square, but the calculation is a bit trickier. Here you take the row sum and multiply it by the column sum, and then divide that product by the grand total. Now we have all the data to calculate our expected values. Let's start with the first cell males who are visual learners. We take the row sum for the males, 100, and multiply it by the column sum for visual, which is 72. 100 times 72 is 7200. Then we divide that by the grand total of 200. We come up with 36 for expected. Go to the next cell, the male auditory learner cell. Row sum is 100 times the column sum of 46 equals 4600. Divide that by the grand total, and you get 23. You would do exactly the same for each cell for the females, only this time you're using the row total for the females. Stop. Some of you have already figured out that, in this case, the numbers are the same for males and for females. Caution, however, this only works if you have exactly the same number for each row total. In this case, there are 100 males and 100 females. If, for example, you had 72 males and 128 females, you'll likely come out with some very different numbers. So unfortunately, you'll have to do this calculation for each cell in the table. You're ready to move on now. You have your observed data, and you've now calculated your expected data. Now you just have to do the same thing you did for the one variable chi-square, following the same formula in each cell, starting with the male visual learners. Observed, 30, minus the expected, which you calculated earlier at 36, is negative 6. Square that, and you'll get 36. Take that number, 36, and divide it by the expected, 36, and you'll get 1. Do the same for the next cell, male auditory learners. Observed, 22, minus the expected, which you calculated at 23, is negative 1. Square that, and you get 1. Take that number 1 and divide it by the expected, 23, and you'll get 0 0.04. And for male kinesthetic learners, observed of 48 minus the expected, 41, is 7. 7 squared is 49, and 49 divided by the 41, the expected, is 1.2. Do exactly the same calculations for each of the cells for females. Again, don't get excited because the resulting numbers are mirror images of each other. The last step to calculate the chi-square is to add all those numbers together, which will equal 4.48. From here on, the steps are the same as one variable chi-square. We already calculated the degrees of freedom using the formula of the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1, giving us 2 degrees of freedom. Assume that we have established our alpha at 0.05. Now go to the critical value table and find where two degrees of freedom intersect with 0.05 alpha level, and it is 5.991. Is our chi-square of 4.48 higher than the critical value? If yes, then we reject the null. 
but 4.48 is less than the critical value of 5.991, meaning we must accept the null and conclude that our data do not support that there are differences between males and females on the variable of learning styles. Processing time, how do you calculate the expected values for a cell in a two-variable chi-square? Remember, for each cell, you multiply the row sum by the column sum and divide that product by the grand total. How are degrees of freedom calculated for a two-variable chi-square? The formula is to multiply the number of rows, minus 1, by the number of columns, minus 1. And what would you do if your calculated chi-square is lower than the critical value chi-square? You should be accepting the null hypothesis and rejecting the alternative chi-square hypothesis, concluding that there are no significant differences between what you observed and what you would have expected to ob and what you would have expected to see if the data were evenly distributed. Hopefully, Hopefully, you can calculate chi-square when given data like we've practiced with here. If you understand one variable chi-square, just remember how to calculate the expected values for the two-variable chi-square, and you should be all set.